So about three or four months ago, we had the opportunity to apply for an Indigenous mental health grant from Advanced Education. It was a one-time grant and we decided we'd like to put something together that would be a little more lasting than what a one-time hire of a person might give us. And this grant actually is giving us an opportunity to create a response to the Truth and Reconciliation call to action. Um, so helping people uh, be able to recognize that healing uh, through arts and through exercises like the blanket exercise and restorative practice is kind of our path forward. So what the blanket exercise is, it was built um, by Kairos, um, which was numerous churches that got together um, and what they did is um, in regards to the truth and reconciliation, they it's a, a trip through history um, from the first landing um, through colonization um, all throughout history to the current day. So um, it gives knowledge um, it's, uh, of how everything evolved in regards to colonizing the Indigenous people. Of course, walking in somebody else's moccasins is kind of the focus on the sessions that we are doing with this workshop. Um, and just with the whole blanket exercise, it is walking in Indigenous people's moccasins, I guess we could say, right? So making the moccasins today is, is kind of just the, um, it all evolves around that, making up the moccasin and walking in them. So until you've walked a mile in somebody else's shoes, do not judge. Correct. So this is kind of where it stems from. So this is a different take, a different aspect on it, and kind of adding our own Indigenous perspective on it. I think art and the traditional art forms that we make are important to healing, especially for Indigenous people, it, because it helps them to heal through reconciliation and learning about their culture through um, traditional art forms that we wore, they're not only art forms, but they're also part of our um, culture and our clothing. And it helps students know where they came from, knowing a little bit about their history. Reconciliation, um, you know, is, is a Canadian issue. Uh, and so it's it, this 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 opportunity gives us a chance, or restorative practices, the session that we'll be providing gives us a chance to really give people some tips and tools that they can use, and how to have good conversations with people, uh, the use of the language, the effective questions, those kinds of things. So that it gives them, they will give them some tools on how to how to connect authentically. Uh, empathy is at the heart of restorative practice. So it's about understanding the person's story their narrative and listening to listen versus listening to respond. So that means for me to be present and really know what it's like to walk in your moccasins, um, that's what the heart of restorative practice is about. And the project, ha the lasting portion of the project is really that we will continue to offer this training, but we also are creating a book that will be able to be used by school children and museums and libraries so that they can find their own way to identify what truth and reconciliation means to them.